Hey guys, welcome back to our last tutorial of how to make a memory matching game. Um, I I'm really sorry for this late post. I know it's really, really, really late. The reason is I finished after I finished my finals, which wasn't lo too long ago. My computer just broke, and I had to fix it. And here you go. I just fixed it, and I'm back with our last tutorial. Hopefully, it's gonna be a really quick tutorial. All we're gonna do is. Uh, Swap the card together and then have a button that that plays the game again, and again, and again. Now, after after this tutorial, I promise you that I'm gonna start posting more tutorials more often also. And uh, this new series is coming up, coming. It's gonna be a huge series. It's gonna be a really, really, really long series. It's going to be about a new game, one of our Trouble A games. Um, we're gonna take our summer building this game from designing to modeling, I mean yeah, from modeling to animating to lighting and programming and all that. So definitely love it, let's stay tuned. All I'm waiting on is my, uh, let me show you. All I'm waiting on is this. I need an external hard drive because my hard drive, I'm really running out of space. So as soon as I receive my new hard drive, I'm definitely going to make in the, the tutorials. I'm going to start right away. So definitely, yeah, stay tuned and yep. Now let's get started on this one. Um, our last tutorials we got up to this point. So we have uh, our time counts down five seconds. Then all the cards flip, and then matching cards stay together. We fix the problem of clicking all the glitches. We fix them. If they are not similar, then they just flip. There you go. If they are similar, they stay there. Cool. So in our tutorial, we're gonna flip these cards. Like we're gonna swap places and flip them because right now you see, and we have our timer working, but for some reason, right now it's not working. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's 10. That's one, yeah, there you go. And it stops for some reason. It stopped. Let's see why. Let's see why. Oh, I think I know why. Yeah, I know why. Yep. Alright, so we didn't add the code after card 3. Don't worry about that. I didn't really add it. I told you I didn't have time for that. So let's add it. Is. All what you do is, as I said, copy this too and paste them on every single card in the same place. And that's it. Okay? So let's get right to our work. Now we want, as soon as we load the game, these cards to be different places right not next to each other so the way we will do it I told you last time we need a list of X and Y but I was thinking this is so dumb why would we have two lists and take up much memory why don't we just make one list of point so I would comment this out and I would make one more list and call it point list of points and call it points okay and that's as simple as that new list okay so now we have our list. Um, next thing I would do is, you know what? Actually, let's get rid of this. We don't even need them while we have them. Even comment it. List to hold to hold cards points. All right. Now we need to store every single card le location in this list. So every point of every card should be stored in this list. So right now we will have list of all the cards locations alright so we could just I would do it in a game load as soon as as soon as the game loads all those cards to be all of the cards location to be stored in the list so I would do it as soon in game load and I would do it in this loop since this loop is going on every single picture box in the cards holder so I would say points our list dot add picture dot location that's it it's as simple as that now what we will have is we will have a list that of all oh I'm sorry excuse me we are going to have a list that holds every single location of every single picture in our in our game menu I mean our game form okay now after we hold it we need to select a random a random number 
or random location and uh, and give it to an, an, a picture okay so what I'm trying to say is if for example the list has has all the locations right now uh, randomly I want to choose a location one point and then uh, give that point to one card okay so the first card will have a different value all right so the random the random point I pick will be assigned to one of the picture boxes so we need then obviously we need another for loop we can't do it in the same loop because if you do the same loop then the same point that it takes is gonna assign it back to the same picture box I think I don't think this I think this sounds a little bit confusing but we can't do it in the same loop just put that in mind so we need to make another loop so for each picture box picture, box, picture and uh, cards holder that controls control controls okay uh, uh do just this first of all send a new variable called next and next equals location dot next and assign the value of location that we have up there dot next and say um, one of the list and go next okay so what we say I'm sorry let me think actually not on the count there's nothing such a thing as next okay all right so what we're saying right now is assign, make a variable called next next gonna go to the next number okay then we say location dot next location we have a number random and we call it location so it picks a random location so it's gonna use this function the random function and it goes next in the points that count so it counts how many how many points in the list it says 500 and then it picks a random number from there and assign it to to, to next and assigns it to our variable next now all we do is point we make it we need to make a new point variable called point p equal point point sorry next okay all right so all right so now this this int uh, next has a has a number has a value let's say it has a value of of 10 so we said point p is equal our list the 10th row in our list you see what I'm saying because right now if you say points one if you just say that that's gonna take out the first value of points but when you assign a variable that every time changes the number like every time has a different value then P will have every time will have a different value now we're just gonna say picture dot location equals P and now what's going on is a picture that, that, that just went through is gonna have a value of the, the random location that was picked now we need to remove this point from the list if we don't remove the point from the list then we're gonna have more than one picture on top of each other they're just gonna pile up on top of each other because they because the same point will be used for different cards so we need to remove it so we know that um, so we know that uh, Hold on. So we make sure actually that this point will not be used again. So we say points dot remove remove this point from the list of points. So P is the point. Remove it from the list points. Now if we start this, it should work just fine. Right? You see, everything is in different places. Now let me just let me just comment this and show you what I mean. What's gonna happen if we don't remove? Now start. We're gonna have some gaps. You see, have gaps because now the, some cards are overlapping because they have the same the same value. And you see, you could click multiple times on this one. You could mul click multiple times on that one. That's why we need this back to normal. And let me show you if we put this right here in the same loop, what was gonna happen? Nothing is gonna happen. They're gonna stay in the same place. You see? they stay in the same place they don't move and that's because the same picture choose the location then the list has no has no values except one 
So the random function is not gonna work. It's just gonna pick the same number that is there, and then it will assign it, assign it to the same picture, and then we'll move on to the next picture. Choose a new value. What? Well, wait. What's gonna happen if we just comment this? Watch. I'm not sure. You see the same problem again. It does that job. It moves everything around, but it overlaps. So let's play it safe and put it back on our next function. I mean uh, loop. Okay. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to point out, but for some reason I forgot. Okay, all right, forget about it. Cool. Um, okay. Actually, now all we need to do is like uh, you see now, everything is working fine. I know these had to do similar. Now click on this. A e similar. Click on that. Oops, wrong. Similar. Wrong. You see. We just we just working fine. This game is working fine. Beautiful. All right, now we need to. Now what if I just want to restart everything? I'm not gonna close it and start again. We need something that holds it. Now I could make like a couple more tutorials on that, hey, but I think it's useless. So all what I will do is is add a new button that says and put it on the side and says, hey, play again. That's all. I'm not gonna handle nothing. Okay, play again. Change the font. I like to change my font. Okay, why open it this way? I could just open it from the plus sign. I'm not gonna freeze up for a few seconds. Probably a minute. There you go. I right, put it twelve. Put it bold. And see, yeah, that's that looks good. Put it down like that. Okay. Now we wanna click on the on the, the, the this button. We need everything to be restarted. So it's as simple as that. Just click on it, double click. Well, what you need to do is you see the game load. We need this event to fire up again. The game load, what's going on in here? Everything going on in here to be to be played again. I mean, you could really just copy this and paste it, but that's this is gonna be so dumb. Well, you already have a function ready for you. So all what you need to do is. Go down here and put game window underscore load. So that's the event. And then just put whatever it needs values. It needs an object sender, which is sender in this our case. We have it. And an event args of E. That's if you don't know function, I doubt you'll understand what's going on here. This relates back to functions and uh, variables and all that. So, alright. Now let's start. Okay, five seconds. All right, now we're gonna start again and everything to be switched. Press it again. Here you go. Game started one more time. Oh, now the the problem is the timer is going on. Oh, it's going on forever in negative, and that's because in game game window load we didn't assign the value as five. We just put it right here. Actually, we just came here and put five. Which is that, well, that's wrong. So raise that, and in our game window, as soon as the window loads, before anything happens. So let's go all the way up to game window. What is game window? Let's try here. All right. Um, we could really add it here or after. So we'll just, we'll just put it here. It's called label one. Oh, we call it label one. All right, label one dot text equals five. That's it. Now play it. All right, that's gonna stay five, four, three, two, one. Zero play again goes back to five four three two one zero play again everything keeps moving see you see look look at the for example the cherry they can change location right now play again you see they change location they change location all right all right now the cherries are in different positions okay so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I'm um, sorry again for the lateness of this last video, but I think this will wrap up this series tutorials. Um, again, definitely wait on the next upcoming tutorials, um, especially this coming uh, series. It's gonna be beautiful, huge, and amazing tutorials. Okay, I'm, I'm sure 100% everybody gonna like it. It's about one of the most famous triple A PlayStation games. We're gonna build it on computer. Alright, so have a good day and enjoy your summer. Have a good one.